Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome, welcome everyone to Ice Cream Suite 8 release webinar. So you know that it has been released just a couple of hours ago. Today we want to tell you more about new features, about improvements on which the company has been working more than one year. So what is iSpring 8? You know that it's a powerful tool for developing e-learning content and it doesn't require training because it's so easy to use. And you know that it was created for busy people. You know what I mean? All of us. Yes. <laughs> so busy, so busy. So, well, here's the question. What makes iSpring 8 better? Well, uh, it has uh, the new screen recording tool, conversational simulator, video lecture player, and has audio and video editor and many more. So it was a short overview of iSprints with 8. And my name is Dorian. And today I have Mark Simon with uh, Hi Mark Solutions and Michael Hocker, the technical guru of ice cream solutions. So yeah, I hope that we will try to explore the new feature, the new features and the new version. And after that, we will cover all the questions that you might have. So don't forget to send them during the presentation. So here's my overview and I'm ready to turn over and let's start and let Mark start. That sounds great. Thank you, Daria. You're welcome. So, um, yeah, I'm an independent contractor. I work out of uh, the Boston area, and I use many different tools, uh, designing e-learning, developing e-learning, and consulting on strategies for e-learning implementations. And um, I guess, you know, the, the thing that I like about uh, iSpring is not even iSpring itself, but the fact that it, it is a PowerPoint-based tool. Um, and a lot of people have a negative impression and have had a negative impression of PowerPoint. But at least one thing to keep in mind is that PowerPoint is a very mature product. It's not uh, a product that's just come out within the last year, the last couple of years. So it's evolved over the years. And I think also the PowerPoint users have evolved over the years. And so what we're seeing now is PowerPoint that really doesn't look like the old PowerPoint. So you're not seeing so much of the title, the bullet, 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 and that sort of thing. There's some very creative PowerPoint out there. Um, and for me, if I'm a designer, an e-learning designer, which I like to think that I am. You uh, are. <laughs> <laughs> we think so too, Mark. Well, thank you. I, I actually play one in the movie, uh, if nothing <laughs> else, so I can fake it, right? That's right. Um, so for me, I I. I actually like to use the other tools as well. So I, I, am I allowed to say the other tools? So I use Storyline, I use Captivate, I use other tools, but I like to have a PowerPoint-based tool. And it, you know, part of it comes down to just a couple of reasons. Number one, the methodology for a PowerPoint-based tool means the core file is a PPT file. All right. So I've done development in a lot of different organizations where there's a subject matter expert. There's a graphic designer. It's nice to be able to turn over the file itself to somebody else and say, okay, you take it for a while and you improve it. And you can't do that with a .story file or a .cpx file. Um, so the methodology by itself lends itself pretty well to sometimes choosing that PowerPoint-based tool. And then the other pieces as far as animations, transitions, there's no tool out there that does more animations and more transitions than PowerPoint. There's everything under the sun that you can imagine in there. And then little things like if you're picky about your text, you know, and you want to do text with wide kerning or uh, kerning and letting, and I always get those terms mixed up. Um, <laughs> yeah, but to make your text better. <laughs> right, it really does. It it has the full arsenal of different fonts, not just one font, or uh, I should say, a refined set of fonts, um, and things like that. So there there are a lot of big advantages, I think, to using a PowerPoint based tool as part of the mix, uh, no matter what you're doing with e-learning development. 
And I'm going to just jump in real quick. My name is Gina Shrek, by the way. I saw that as a question. We have started. I'm, I'm guessing if you can hear us that you know that we've started. And I, we, I'm monitoring the questions that are coming in. So um, definitely I'll work those in and share those as we get them. So keep going, Mark. <laughs> great, great. I, I think that was the end of my spiel, Gene, and I'm glad you introduced yourself. I was wondering who you were, too. <laughs> and then someone says, who is, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who, who is that? Three person. Yeah, yeah, only Gina has the Slayer. I, I put that up there. Yeah, yeah. everyone, yeah. Don't please. Know why. Today, we don't have it. Today, Google Plus is acting up, and usually all of us have the banner at the bottom with our name, and for some reason, I won the prize. <laughs> only mine is showing up. <laughs> Don't know why? Only Google knows. Oh, it's crazy. And we asked Google, and we didn't find any answer though. No, none. It's a mystery. Um, well, here's should I? I'm going to jump in with a couple questions before we go to Mikhail. Um, any chance that the quiz function will work in Hebrew? Oh boy, that's that's yeah. actually a Mikhail question. Yeah. I no. don't know Hebrew. <laughs> Mikhail, do you happen to know? <laughs> or well, I'm sorry, uh, Daria. You know well. A little bit, I know a little bit, but regarding Hebrew, um, I know that at, at this point, uh, right now, we don't have this version, but probably, um, of course, we will try to get it soon, but it maybe not in the near, near, like, next couple of months for sure, right. like maybe in like four, three, five months. And then Sarah, this is another Sarah question from Sarah. This is a great one. Is will there be a PDF or a document that lists all the new features of my sure. Spring Suite Eight? Of course. So that's coming. That's yes. Coming. Yes. It, it's gonna be like today, tomorrow. We are almost done, and yeah. Lots of lots of activity with the release. So I know that's one of the things. And Mark, Mark is Mark Simon. Um, Nancy, thanks for see. Nancy's keeping us straight. Nancy, keep those questions coming. <laughs> That's great, yeah. you know. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, wow. actually, I, I just wanted to add um, uh, some information about uh, Hebrew fonts. Right. Uh, actually, it was a problem because of uh, Flash. Uh, Flash just doesn't uh, process Hebrew fonts, or not just Hebrew, but uh, all right-to-left um, uh, fonts, uh, and it cannot uh, render it correctly. Uh, and because uh, the the core of our of all of our solutions um, actually included PowerPoint to Flash conversion, we didn't uh, didn't do uh, this uh, didn't add it into uh, Quiz Maker, for example. However, you can uh, you can add. Uh, right to left uh, fonts on the PowerPoint slides, and uh, it, it always uh, has been perfectly uh, with uh, PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. uh, but as for Quizmaker, uh, yeah, we are we are going to add some uh, uh, some advanced uh, right to left support in future. So just uh, and we also have partners in Israel. I mean, they they also always. Are willing to help us, so I'm sure that yeah, they will be implemented first. So. That's good. You want another question? Here's one that says, um, "How can we record narration and adding background music in Icepring Suite 8?" Yeah, we'll cover it uh, during today's demo. Perfect. That's Perfect. actually one of the big new uh, additions to Icepring is the uh, the audio capabilities. Nice. Yep. Uh, Okay. Well, Mikhail, let's show us some of this exciting, these exciting features. Okay, so yeah, before I turn on uh, the demo, uh, I think that uh, all iSpring users are already familiar uh, with iSpring tools, but uh, let's do a special little introduction uh, anyway to get everybody up to speed. So what iSpring company does, everybody uh, is asking what is iSpring. Uh, so we're not just um, uh, developers of PowerPoint-based authoring tool, but also we offer uh, a top-to-bottom e-learning solution for both content de uh, development and content delivery, including tracking results and statistics of each end user individually. Uh, in other words, we have uh, our own LMS, but today um, we, we're going to we're going to talk about uh, the new release of the eighth generation of uh, iSpring desktop products. Hooray! Finally released. Uh, you know, uh, right uh, right now we had um, 
uh, gathering there uh, uh, in the hall with uh, with all of our team uh, teams of um, iSpring Solutions, and everybody is very happy and uh, very excited um, about the new release. And uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, new features uh, that have been added to the uh, to the iSpring Suite 8, our flagship product. So let me start sharing my entire screen. Okay, so I think my my PowerPoint went live now. Yes. Okay, so um, as we can see, the the new panel of iSpring Suite 8 um, is now wider because more features uh, are included there. So for um, uh, to compare, this is the Suite 7 panel, and uh, uh, for iSpring Suite 8, uh, the major uh, improvement uh, were um, we're of adding some uh, some new modules. Uh, let's start with um, Talk Master Simulation module. Um, so what uh, what it is? Let's see. Uh, many businesses uh, require employees uh, to be comfortable uh, having professional conversations uh, with clients. Uh, so this uh, particular tool. Um, can uh, uh, can simulate um, common scenarios, uh, and uh, it's an excellent way to practice uh, real life situations to avoid any harm to the actual business when your employees uh, go and talk with uh, with your clients. So from here we can uh, create a new sim simulation and create a new uh, scene. We can pick up uh, a character. And a background. Okay, let me. Uh, so here we can add some uh, character speech and uh, add uh, replies. Uh, one would be polite way to uh, to say hi, and another would be not so so good. And from here, uh, we can um, we can create several branches uh, by just by dragging uh, the mouse, and uh, we can um, uh, we can switch the the mood of the character. Uh, so everything is built in the pro uh, product, so we don't uh, don't need to um, to upload your your own cutout photos uh, because every every emotion is already in the product. So uh, yeah, the first one was uh, was happy answer. So she'll be happy about it. <laughs> Hi, how can I? How, uh, Help you, and another will will be not so happy. <laughs> Out of my way. So when we uh, preview the scenario, we'll see everything uh, in the. Um, so everything is is combined uh, automatically. Uh, so it'll appear uh, fine on all uh, kinds of devices like desktop computers, uh, iPads, and smartphones. So. Uh, Hi, uh, Michael. Here's a question: Do we uh, need to use iSpring backgrounds, or can other images be used? Well, uh, yeah, of course you can. Uh, you can choose your own background, but uh, the the current version of um, uh, dialog simulation um, uh, tool. Already comes with uh, with preset backgrounds, so th this is kind of a very simple conversation. Uh, but using this um, this tool, we can uh, create uh, very complex conversations, like in uh, in a car dealership center. And um, 
when when I load this um, this conversation, we'll see the uh, the whole tree of the uh, conversation, and uh, uh, every path can uh, can affect some. Uh, um, I mean, it can affect the the whole process uh, positively or negatively. So if if we zoom in, um, we can see the answer. So the uh, conversation editor is is very easy to use, and uh, uh, I hope uh, we all hope that uh, all of our users will will like it. So let's preview some more complex. And uh, just so um, to clear to clarify, yeah. you're using this avatar. This component would be used for. Creating, um, you're you're in right now and showing what would what would it be if you were creating a program, creating a course, and you needed um, a piece of the course to have this avatar come on and ask a question. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So th this module can be uh, whether embedded um, into your uh, into the entire learning course that uh, that includes all the PowerPoint slides and uh, quizzes and other modules uh, added with uh, iSpring, and uh, this can be uh, this conversation simulation can be added as a as a separate uh, module, or you can. Uh, you can publish uh, this module uh, on its own, and uh, moreover, um, it, it is Quorum compliant, so uh, you can upload it to a learning management system, and um, this particular module can be used for um, uh, for training the, uh, for example, a sales or a support team, and uh, checking their knowledge and uh, deciding whether uh, whether this particular employee. Uh, can start working or or still need some uh, uh, some training. Okay, so it's just this is the example. Someone's just asking what what is this avatar part used for? And Marsha, I we do hear or we are seeing your questions. We're trying to save like the technical questions for the end. We'll do kind of a Q and A time um, as he's going through this part, just so we don't derail him. Hopefully right. And here is another question. So, uh, can a user load custom animated characters with different emotions for the talk feature, for the to this talk master feature? Well, uh, here's the point, Daria. Uh, these uh, characters are already um, preset characters. Yeah. And but if, uh, if a user wants to add a custom animated characters. Well. Uh, all all characters that are added to, right now to the uh, to the iSpring talk talk master are still so they they are not animated but uh, depending on the on the choice you you make here uh, your character can uh, can reflect uh, can re reflect the mood so um, technically speaking there are five different um, um, five different pictures uh, per uh, per character, so uh, yeah. But they, if I want to upload my own character, I mean, like with with my own emotions, can I can I upload them? Yeah, you can you can easily do that. Uh, but uh, during the scene, during uh, during this character is asking question or uh, question or waiting for for you to answer the question, the uh, picture, the photo of the uh, of the av avatar will be still. So, right now you cannot uh, embed um, like video uh, video clips, but um, yeah, you can, uh, Daria. You you definitely can uh, upload uh, pictures of yourself or just uh, add cut out images of any any other uh, character you like. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I, th I hope uh, many many users will find this uh, feature uh, really really useful. And let's continue. And uh, okay, yeah, it, uh, the simulation can be added on the uh, on the slide in our PowerPoint presentation, but uh, we we don't need um, the simulation in uh, in this particular course. Um, so the, the new iSpring suite also includes a screen recording tool, uh, which is super useful if any of your courses include uh, 
software simulations or any other types of um, tra trainer videos where you can show how some system works uh, right on your computer screen. Also, you can, um, uh, using this uh, screen recording tool, um, you can uh, record the, the entire screen or uh, a part of it. Uh, or also you can um, uh, you can set the the screen to to be aligned with uh, with, with some uh, particular window with, with some application. So um, it's very easy to use that um, if you if you ever used um, like Camtasia for example, uh, you won't have any problems uh, getting start uh, starting using um, screen recording tool. So now uh, this screen is already uh, recorded. So all all my changes that I do here will be nicely captured by uh, by our screen recording. So here we can uh, preview. Yeah, and also I I hear myself because uh, screen capture tool also also can record uh, a microphone and system sounds. So this uh, video can be um, can be saved separately or can be added on a on a slide in our PowerPoint presentation uh, by by click clicking save and return. So if you use some third-party tool uh, like Camtasia, now you don't need to switch bet uh, between uh, different applications because you have everything you need in one place. Uh, it's right on the iSpring Suite toolbar. Thank you, Michael. And here's a question. You know, uh, okay, there are many features and improvements, and I see questions like, okay, about video tutorials and when they will be available. So, are you working on uh, new video tutorials with the to explain in more ab about these features? Yeah, actually, we we have uh, blog posts. Um, it's it's under ispringsolutions.com uh, slash blog, mm -hmm. and uh, all every new feature is already uh, perfectly explained there with some uh, explanation videos. Okay. And uh, of course, we are preparing more um, getting started videos uh, that will show in detail for all of our users how to use uh, every every new feature of iSpring. Awesome! Thanks. Uh, another important part of um, course preparation is um, audio and video post production. So here we recorded some um, video uh, with uh, with a voiceover uh, using. Uh, screen recording tool and everybody knows that uh, no recording is perfect right away and it's important to have uh, some built-in tool to uh, to fine-tune uh, the the recorded piece so uh, you don't have to keep switching uh, applications like uh, uh, for example me I, I used to switch between uh, iSpring uh, managed narration and uh, Camtasia um, I'm sorry um, between uh, Audacity, yeah, Audacity is a really nice tool, but for for general um, speech post production, you don't need um, very very much. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of different functions. So let me show you how this uh, feature works. Um, a video and audio editor uh, is uh, included in the uh, screen recording tool in this window and. Uh, uh, certainly in in the manage narration tool so here you can see the waveform of the uh, of the voiceover and uh, now you can uh, you can not just stream your audio and video from beginning uh, from the beginning and the end as it used to be but you can cut uh, some parts of the of the audio and video like delete uh, uh, takes that you don't like so let's let's do it uh, some parts of this video with uh, with a voiceover. Also, we can uh, select a piece of of the audio and uh, increase the increase the volume size here. So you can see the how the waveform uh, replies to the changes I I do here. 
And um, also you can apply uh, fade in and uh, fade out, fade out um, the modifications to your to your audio track. And the the most uh, advanced feature uh, here is uh, is noise reduction. So let me uh, show you how this feature works. This uh, noise reduction feature will uh, remove uh, uh, like ambient uh, noise, uh, for example, of the fan of your computer or or some uh, air conditioning. And um, I, uh, all I need to uh, to do is to select uh, a part. Uh, of, of silence in my um, audio track and click remove noise so um, this tool will will use uh, this uh, selection as the noise profile and then I just click remove noise and it uh, automatically applies um, noise removal feature to the to the entire clip so it's very very easy to use even easier than in um, in audacity so I, I hope um, all of our customers will will uh, love using this feature. And and Randy asked a question. Hopefully, Randy, that answered that part answered the question about how to edit the narration on 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 screen recorder. Um, let let us know if that did or did not answer your question. Hopefully, it did. Do you want to take more questions, or do you are you do you have more that you're showing us, Mikhail? Yeah, I have, I have um, a new player. Perfect. For you to show. So okay, let's let's close this window for now. I guess a quick question on the mm -hmm. on the audio. Does the audio editor have a sound level meter? Uh. Sound level meter uh, is um, okay. Let me let me close it properly so I can go back. So let me open manage narration window. Here, uh, here we have uh, video. I, I uh, added this video before. Uh, before the show, uh, let me let me check when we record in audio here. Okay, let's start recording from the third slide. Check uh, sound recording. So if you are recording something here, yeah, it'll be automatically added to the uh, to the voiceover for the presentation. But yeah. Uh, ans answering to the question about uh, uh, sound meter, uh, it's not uh, included yet in the uh, in the current uh, release of the iSpring Suite, but it's uh, it's a really nice uh, feature uh, feature request for for upcoming uh, updates. So you right here, you you recorded while you were in here. Can you add something you had already recorded, or is that what you? Yeah. Mean? Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's what I what I'm uh, what I've done with uh, with this yeah. video. Right. Uh, you can uh, embed audio or video track, and uh, the very nice cool feature of adding a, an audio is that you can uh, add uh, uh, already pre uh, pre recorded audios per slide. So you don't you don't have to select every slide and uh, individually add. Um, one audio after after another. If you let's say have uh, ten audios and ten slides, you uh, you you can do it at uh, at a one mouse click. So I just wanted to show you the the new cool feature, uh, the um, video lecture player. So we also call it uh, 50, 50 to fifty because uh, um, we've received a lot of requests to enla enlarge uh, narration video in the iSpring course player like like here but uh, in in iSpring course player video would take uh, a little corner uh, on a side and uh, in the previous version you could uh, you could switch uh, slide and uh, and a video but uh, you couldn't make it uh, make it even couldn't uh, make it at the same 
uh, size. So uh, we developed uh, a new player that uh, shows the slideshow and the talking head alongside each other. So it uh, nicely works uh, works with uh, any computer or mobile device and uh, lets you change proportions of the slide and video as you like by dragging the border. Let me show you uh, how it works. So I I'm saving and closing uh, Manage Narration Editor. Uh, this video lecture player is uh, accessible through the uh, Publish window. Okay, it takes some time to to save all changes. Google Hangout also slows everything down, I think. Yeah. So meanwhile, uh, I have one more question about the audio and video editor. So the question was, um, so okay, so does I screen with eight do screen capture or oh, no? Not this one. Ah, okay. So um, the Randy meant that uh, he wants to know whether the audio can be added to screen recording. I mean, like not just mm -hmm. embed like audio and video but just add to screen recording. Yeah, like you can uh, you can do a screen uh, recording and um, actually I've recorded uh, a screen uh, during during my previous take and uh, I I recorded some video from the uh, from my microphone. So let me let me select another slide because it, it already has uh, narration video uh, so when I click screen recording and uh, do a new recording, we have uh, uh, an options, uh, a properties um, icon. So here I can select what to record, some uh, whether my microphone or uh, also record uh, system sounds like you guys uh, talking uh, would, would be would have been also recorded if I used uh, if I used uh, this feature. Okay, but and if I'll, I do have the video, right? I can just, I mean, like, sorry, audio, then I can just mm -hmm. add it to the recording. Feature. Yes, you can, uh, you can um, insert an audio within, um, within the manage narration tool. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, you can synchronize your uh, slides and your uh, video recordings, so uh, everything within, uh, within the manage narration tool. So, uh, before, uh, while you're working on uh, narrations, go to manage narration, and uh, you will see every every tool that you need for synch synchronization and uh, everything like that uh, within this uh, tool. Uh, also, as for screen recording, you can um, uh, highlight mouse uh, cursor and uh, enable mouse click sounds. So it uh, it will add uh, mouse clicks uh, to to the voiceover to your screen recording, so it'll it'll make even more sense uh, while teaching uh, people where to click and uh, recording other um, video training uh, videos. Okay, so let me close um, screen recording tool. Uh, yeah, I was going to show you uh, the new video lecture player. So under publish. I go um, player and uh, select uh, video lecture. So here we can see uh, that um, uh, these uh, these slides appeared uh, side by side. And uh, I'm gonna publish one slide, so it'll take less time to to process the entire presentation. You know, I yeah. see that we have like common questions more and more about like the talk master master feature. I, I think like everyone likes it or just have more questions about it because like we will discuss them in the in the end of, of our presentation. But it, uh, I found it very interesting that there are so many questions about it. Yeah, you know, it's awesome, Daria, that people are uh, interested in um, uh, in this dialogue simulation feature. Okay, so the, uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, conversation uh, 
the conversation module added on the slide. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, I used uh, the same slide. So um, it, it should be the clear slide, but uh, because I already used um, simulation feature here, uh, this slide has been already associated with uh, with the simulation. It's it's easy to uh, remove uh, this object from here, but uh, I just wanted to show you how to uh, to drag the the slide feature and uh, the other narrator feature. Actually, you can use. Uh, uh, probably you'll find it useful that you can you can uh, leave a talking head and still um, utilize uh, the dialogue simulation. So even creating a course, you can have slides and then a piece that you're you're narrating and speaking in video, and then maybe the slide becomes less important and you're talking, so you can switch back and forth. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. So this is how it looked like uh, on. Uh, on the iPad. Here is the outline. So uh, this uh, this player is really simple, and uh, uh, this player doesn't have any customization settings uh, because it doesn't need them. Uh, so we just wanted to be to develop uh, as uh, as simple player as possible, like uh, like like Google has on YouTube. Uh, so there are no uh, any customization to this player, and uh, we decided that uh, this player should be fine with uh, with all devices because you don't see this um, uh, sidebars and uh, panels and uh, all the buttons on the um, while you're playing it on iPad, and uh, the player adjusts itself automatically to every screen resolution, so you won't have any problems. Um, accessing your um, your video content and your slide content on any any kind of device. That's great. One question that I, can the characters dialogue, oh no, it was the, can the avatar narrate the full course? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the uh, the narration video can be added uh, to to some selected slides, or you can have uh, the narrator uh, narrating the the entire presentation. So here I have I have it added uh, to the second slide only, but but I can uh, stretch some some slides and I can uh, add like longer video here, so it'll cover uh, the entire um, so uh, the entire presentation. One video can play throughout the whole slides and not mm -hmm, stop mm -hmm. when the user changes slides. It actually keeps going. Oh, yeah, Mark, yeah. we're glad to see you again. <laughs> Mark's back. You I'm back. here. Yeah. yeah. So, by the way, you, while you are here, uh, can you please tell us what is your favorite feature in Icebreak Suite 8? You have your favorite one? Well, I do like Talkmaster. Uh, everybody was commenting on Talkmaster, and I find that uh, for many different departments in almost every organization, Talkmaster is a great tool uh, because how many times are you teaching an HR person how to conduct an interview, a salesperson how to how to uh, solicit business? Um, you know, if you go into other departments, there's also a lot of interactions for leadership trainings and things like that where you want to do a role play. And um, it's a really effective tool for that. And then the, the the video part is also very useful on a mobile device. It's a it's a great tool to to be able to see not only just the talking head and personalize your your e-learning, uh, but also to have the visual of a slide or some content right next to it. So, you know, you've got the best of both worlds there in terms of the you know the personalization plus the content. Cool, cool. Thanks. I I love this feature too. I mean, like, it, I think it's all about this talk master feature. It's it's yep. really cool. Sure. Agree. Michael, are you still with us? You yeah, yeah, sure. And I highlight about quiz uh, section, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, Quizmaker, uh, which is traditionally a part of uh, of our e-learning suite, has also gotten some important updates. So let me uh, launch. And we have uh, some quiz questions, so I'll I'll queue those up while you're covering this section. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, here um, here's the uh, quiz on. Uh, 
uh, on a solar solar system uh, class. Uh, and uh, slide view uh, is now built uh, into the main quizmaker window where you edit uh, your question. Uh, your questions. Uh, let me remind you that uh, in the previous version, uh, you would have to open a separate window to fine-tune the layout um, uh, and design of the selected slide from from here. So we only had this form view, and by selecting a separate slide, uh, we would need to click a slide view button here. But now, uh, now you have a nice switcher between two tabs that uh, represent two different views. The form view, which controls feedback, answer, uh, branching options. Uh, uh, so here, here's feedback and branching, etc. And uh, slide view, uh, which controls question design and layout. So uh, it will uh, make uh, make customization, um, yeah, make any customizations to your quiz design uh, a lot faster, and uh, you can uh, you'll just save your time uh, preparing uh, quizzes and uh, adding some pictures and uh, inserting uh, any kind of um, animations to your to your questions. So, are there new questions in QuizMaker Eight? Uh, you know, Juno, uh, the current version of uh, QuizMaker already has like 11 uh, different uh, question types, and um, yeah, yeah, we think that uh, all kinds of questions, uh, of graded questions, are are have uh, have already been added to to QuizMaker. We we still accept uh, any feature requests for for any uh, new question types. Okay. Um, also, we have uh, uh, the same number of questions in the survey question um, group. Uh, so all these questions will not be rated, but uh, uh, they are very, uh, very useful if you if you're giving some somebody a survey, for example, uh, when when you uh, when you give a survey to new employees. So, uh is it also like available new type of, of questions of cool in quizmaker like drag and drop or, or picture labeling type etc uh not yet daria um we yeah as for uh drag and drop and uh picture questions we we still have um okay hotspot question where you can uh, embed a picture oh, not here so, you would embed a picture and uh, draw some some areas. And uh, yeah, th these will be uh, hotspot area. Uh, yeah, this is not a, a new feature, but uh, in the latest release, you. Uh, you can select uh, a color of um, of some buttons um, uh, in your uh, in your answers for for your quiz maker questions. So uh, everything will will fit your uh, color scheme. Okay. So it's gonna be. Yeah. So we we added uh, control highlights for radio buttons and checkboxes. Uh, and buttons and menus. Uh, so let's let's assign a, a custom color to to radio buttons and uh, and apply it to our course. And uh, and try to to preview this course because yeah, you know when when you insert. Uh, when you insert your color scheme, um, everything must be of, of the same color. So, we we added some uh, minor um, updates to the to the quiz design, and the the major update to to QuizMaker was uh, was this uh, slide view mode. Yeah, and also um, uh, undo and uh, redo options, which is uh, necessary to uh, just save the time. Yeah, yeah. To to use um, when you create some complex uh, quizzes and want to roll back. Yeah. 
This may be more of a technical question, but Marsha, you've been very patient waiting on this one. <laughs> she said, um, one problem, some of the students couldn't access the course. They only got a blank screen. Um, she packaged it in HTML only, and then both. They still couldn't get in, and then she said, we had to delay, let's see, delay access to the course. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's... I mean, like, I think it's more technical question, yeah, and that we need to work on it with, after the presentation. Right, that might be... Sorry, Marsha. Just, yeah, just leave us your email and we get back to you and we will have somebody involved with you and just, yeah, just describe everything. Um, let's see. We only have about 10 or 15 more minutes before it's been an hour, so let's get through some of these questions as well. Um, oh, there's so many. Let's see. I want a seamless way to host on the web. I've had problems, and now I'm hosting my presentations using Google Drive, but that will be discontinued soon. Are there best ways to host exported HTML presentations online? I don't know who wants to take it. No, yeah. So I, I do that pretty often, um, and uh, first of all, uh, we do have iSpring does have um, iSpring Learn as an option, uh, as an uh, LMS, and it's a great solution. But they also have a different LMS called iSpring Cloud, and if wow. you haven't wow. seen iSpring Cloud, I really uh, highly recommend taking a look at that. It's an excellent tool for being able to do reviews with people, whether they're in your LMS or not in your LMS. So iSpring Cloud would be another recommendation, and I use Dropbox a lot. Uh, it has spotty results. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it does not, and it's mysterious. Uh, and uh, uh, Google One, Google Drive is supposed to work, but it takes some trickery. Uh, and then OneDrive. I haven't tested out OneDrive yet from Microsoft, but uh, the rumor is that OneDrive works as well. And the last one that I'll throw out here is SharePoint. And I've never had a problem with SharePoint, but of course, uh, to have SharePoint, uh, generally speaking, you'd have to be part of an enterprise organization or an enterprise company. But those are all possibilities for uh, putting your, your lesson up somewhere where your reviewers can, uh, can view it. Yeah, let me um, add some, some information on that. Uh, actually, sharing the published uh, content uh, is, is very important. Um, question to uh, uh, they can be asked uh, uh, and um, unless you uh, you publish to um, to an LMS module to a SCORM uh, zip package and upload it uh, to your uh, LMS uh, you will get uh, a folder uh, that represents a website technical speaking uh, so I what iSpring does it it, it uh, turns your PowerPoint um, presentation and uh, I would say uh, a PowerPoint project a PowerPoint based e-learning project uh, because it can include uh, such features as uh, dialogue simulations and quizzes etc so it publishes everything to a folder that contains all these files index uh, file uh, is one that we launched to, to open the course and uh, a bunch of files in, uh, in a data folder uh, this data folder includes all um, all phones and pictures and uh, etc. So uh, this is a web page uh, that uh, you can upload to any web hosting. Uh, for example, Amazon hosting. If you if you have an access to, uh, it uh, will not work uh, with uh, Google Drive because um, uh, it it used to work, uh, but uh, it was like uh, like a tricky uh, thing to. Uh, to upload uh, a website to Google Drive, and uh, uh, guys at Google are are clever, and they um, uh, they restrict uh, such kind of uh, access to their file sharing service uh, being used as the web hosting service, which is uh, which we can understand. So therefore, we developed uh, a new system called iSpring Cloud, as Mark already uh, mentioned. Uh, iSpring Cloud uh, is um, is not an LMS like iSpring Learn, uh, but uh, rather it um, it is uh, uh, the place uh, on on the web for your 
uh, web presentations created with iSpring and for any other files that you can share with Dropbox. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a Dropbox for iSpring presentations. Really easy to use, uh, published one click. Um, iSpring Cloud um, is, uh, is, a, is an additional uh, tab in the, in the publish window. So uh, when you publish your presentation, you can publish it uh, on your local computer. Uh, and uh, use it anywhere you want later. Or um, if you if you are an iSpring Cloud user, you can uh, upload it to iSpring Cloud right away in uh, in one click. You can uh, test it out for for 30 days. Uh, we we offer a free trial for iSpring Cloud, and uh, actually prices for iSpring Cloud are are less than for for our iSpring LMS. Uh, because it's, it's just a sharing uh, sharing service. Okay, thank you. Here is another question uh, we have from Andre. That uh, he said that function at the ground music in iSpring Seven disappeared. So how he can record narration and have the ground music on a slide in the new version? Yeah, it's a good question because um, uh, the background uh, audio track, um, yeah, uh, indeed, it, it disappeared from the uh, managed narration. Let me start uh, sharing my screen again. So yeah, there is uh, there is no more uh, background music um, uh, audio track here. We we have uh, audio narration and uh, a video narration track. Uh, so the place where we can add uh, a background music is um, Presentation Explorer. Yeah, applying all changes can can take uh, significant time. So let me let me close the uh, manage narration. Yeah, if you uh, Andrea, if you go to the um, presentation Explorer tool on the iSpring um, toolbar. You'll see the um, you'll see the option to add a background music. Uh, so background music option is now available uh, within uh, the Presentation Explorer tool. Hmm. Thank you. And questions are coming. <laughs> Okay, so here's the okay the question about the uh, speech balloons to videos. I mean, like uh, any plans or to add or it was already added? Yeah, some dis uh, some labels that you can embed on uh, on a YouTube video uh, over over the top of your video at some uh, particular point. Right. Yeah, this uh, this is not in the in the current um, uh, iSpring uh, iSpring suite. Okay, let me let me go back. Uh, you know, you can uh, insert uh, animations. Uh, it's a tricky way of um, of going around that, but you can uh, you can insert balloons here and uh, add some information. Describe some uh, some points of your video. Uh, however, you would need to uh, to turn on the animation pane and uh, perfectly adjust uh, the uh, the object to appear. And uh, also, if you added a video on the slide, you would need to uh, make it start automatically, so everything will be in sync. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, Yet we we don't have a, a pre-built uh, pre-built editor to to add balloons to your to your video. However, yeah, it's a it's a really good uh, feature request for for our new versions. Cool, thank you. So uh, it's almost one hour, and we still have questions. So uh, here's the plan. I mean, like. We have another webinar scheduled next week, so uh, I think we need to uh, take to note all these questions that, that we have right now, and we will definitely cover and answer all of them 
uh, next week, mm -hmm. as well as you will have our uh, visitors and they have more questions. They are more than welcome to ask them. But I think we like run out of the time for today, right? What we can also do is we can post these because the questions will be on the Google Plus page. So we can yeah, post them, the answer. especially the technical questions. Um, we'll take these questions, put them on Google Plus so that we can get those answered um, in writing, the ones that we can get to. And then, yeah, next Thursday, same time, another Google Hangout. Yeah, so we can bring more questions. Yeah, and we will cover more details. And yeah, then it was great to have you today. And I uh, thank you for your time, Mark, Michael, Gina. So then stay tuned and we'll see you next week. Sounds great. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for questions and have a nice day. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Goodbye.